again, giving me another opportunity to come to share his word with his people. Thank God for that's the game, this is the game. I just thank God for you, my brothers and sisters here at this moment. I was thinking uh, so many things happening in this world a day. Uh, you just can look at the weather. They'll let you know that something is terribly wrong. It's, it's hot when it's supposed to be cold, and it's cold when it's supposed to be hot. But not just that, there's a whole lot of other things that are going on in this world. And I thought about it and I said, you know what? I have to keep reminding myself, I don't know if you have to do it yourself. I have to keep reminding myself, this is not my home. This is not my home. And I know sometimes this, this thing is real. Because living in it, it's real. And sometimes we get so caught up in this thing till we, we think this is it. We get caught up in our troubles, we get caught up in even in our good times. But this is not our home. We just passing through. Amen. Just passing through. Alright? So today I'm gonna talk about the gospel. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the gospel. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead is the most important and best established fact in all history. We have more historical evidence for the bodily resurrection of Jesus than for any other event that ever happened in, in the ancient world. What I saying something? We have more evidence of the bodily resurrection than any other event that happened in the ancient world, right? And like I said, we're talking about the resurrection, the, uh, the gospel, right? The 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, starting with the first verse, he says, most overly, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which you also have received, and wherein you stand. In other translations read, Now, brethren, I want to remind you. And that's all this, this is about, just a reminder. And we need to be reminded. Yeah. Whether we we doing things supposed to be doing or we not, we still need to be reminded. And the older we get, we definitely need some reminders, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So he said, I just want to remind you of the gospel. And what is the gospel? Hopefully after we finish this, you if you already know that we are we know even better, huh? Yeah. Hopefully. So what is the gospel? Here in this verse, first verse, he says, uh, this was not a new doctrine for the, for the Corinthians, the resurrection. They heard it before. But it was necessary that they should be reminded of it at this critical time. It's some critical times, y'all. Oh, yeah. We're living in some critical times now. Oh, yeah. oh just turn, you just look at the news. Yeah. All you got to do is just look. Got the news. I'm not going to tell you which one to look at, just any one of them. All right. And any time. We're living in some critical times, y'all. And it was going through some critical times, and we are going through some critical times. He said, I just want to remind you of the resurrection. Second verse, he says, by which ye also are saved by the gospel. Yeah. If you keep in mind memory, what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. I, I like this. I, I got this from the uh, NIV study Bible, and I, I like how they put this. It, say, it says, if you are not con con uh, concerned in the second verse, if you are not persevering in the Christian faith, this is evidence that you did not have saving faith in the first place. Uh, let me read that again. If you are not persevering in the Christian faith, this is 
evident that you did not have saving faith, saving faith in the first place. And you know, we can go through some stuff. I'm talking right in here. <laughs> There's a lot of people that started off with us, huh? Yeah. They ain't here now. That, that, I'm not saying that they pass on from me either. They, they just give up. Give up. Perseverance is a sign in the Christian faith that, that really, we are saved. And the other thing, too, that, that let us know we say, some of the things I would want to change. Some of the things you used to want to do that was wrong. Yeah. I told the boys that I'll stay in the prison. I said, I can leave right now. I used to love drinking. I, you know, I'll leave right now. You can even drink right now. I said, but I don't want to. All right, man. See, my want to change. All right. See, when you want to change, yeah, yeah, you used to want to curse people out, but now you just don't want to. You used to want to lie, but you just don't want to. You used to want to steal, and you, I'm talking about me now, you just don't want to, no, I just want to. That's a sign that this thing is real because you want you to change. Yeah, yeah, I used to like to do a lot of stuff. I just don't lie. And most of that things, I don't just have the engine no more. And I'm a young man. I ain't. Well, some of the things that just don't, this is uh, perseverance. It's a sign, one of the signs that this thing is real to us. And also, it's just want to. I'm talking about the gospel. I'm coming to 1 Corinthians 15 uh, chapter. I mean the third verse. And he says this. Paul says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Right? First of all, mean first of importance. The gospel is the most important message the church ever proclaimed. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. Yeah, we can do a whole lot of other stuff here. But this is it. The gospel is the most important uh, message the church has proclaimed. And if you're not proclaiming the gospel, you're not doing it yet. He says, uh, uh, I also received, all right? And Paul, the gospel Paul preached was not a human in origin, or it would have been like all other human religions, born of man's pride and Satan's deceit. Uh, and, and it comes from man. If you look in Galatians 1 chapter, he said, God, he said that Jesus revealed this to him when he was in Arabia. Jesus gave him this gospel, all uh -huh. right? He said, then he also says uh, how that Christ died for our sins. This is a historical fact. fact. And very few deny it. Let me try to deny it. Uh -huh. But let me say this. The cross allowed God to be both loving and just. Uh -huh. Loving in the way that he saved the lost, man, lost mankind. Yeah. And just by punishing sin. At the same time, yeah. only God can do that. Yeah. And sometimes we have a problem with either one of them, huh? Right. <laughs> Love and angel. Yeah. He did both of them at the same time when he, yeah. when he crucified, when Jesus was crucified on the cross, he, he, he was loving and just yeah. yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We can't pull that off, y'all. I don't care how much you try. <laughs> he said, he said, let me, let me read this to you. Uh, no, I finished. I ain't finished. It says, according to the scripture, uh -huh. gotta do this one. According to the scripture, uh, according to the scripture, Paul was referring to the Old Testament scripture because the New Testament scripture wasn't formulated yet. He comes from Isaiah 53 and 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgression. Uh -huh. See, like some people like to take it as a physical thing, but it's spiritual. <laughs> he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, we was healed. I I'd rather be healed physically, spiritually, than physically. Let me die. But I want to be healed spiritually, because of if I'm healed spiritually, I'm going to live again. Right. Right. I'm going to live again. So many people run after that physical healing. That's good. But you're going to die again. But when you are healed spiritually, you're going to die. Christians are going to die. And this was written 
700 years before anything happened. Well, God is amazing, huh? Yes, he is. Yes. Before, 700 years before Jesus touched ground, he already said this. John, the first chapter says, 29 verse says, the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's scripture. According to the scripture. Make sure it's according to the scripture, y'all. Paul was speaking of delivering the gospel that he received. The delivering of the gospel seemed as important as receiving it. Oh, we receive it, huh? But we got a problem with delivering it. We have received the gospel. And you know what time it is now? Can y'all help me? It's time to what? To deliver. It's time to deliver. We have received the gospel. Let me ask you a question. How did you first receive the news about Jesus? You don't have to answer right now. How did you receive the news about Jesus? Let me ask you another question. Who delivered it to you? All right? Let me ask you another question. What are you doing to deliver it faithfully to others? What are you doing? Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. I, I, I heard this, I read this, I remember uh, D.L. Moody was preaching, and after he finished preaching, uh, some lady come up to him and said, you know, listening to you preach, you had 13 radical errors. <laughs> and D.L. Moody said, uh, I'm just doing the best I can. He said, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know what you're doing, you're, you're picking out everything that's wrong. That's what you're doing, but what are you doing? We like to pick out everything somebody else is doing, but what are you doing? That's what we ask, what are you doing? Now you know about D.R. Moody, huh? But you know anything about that woman? Let me go on. The fourth verse, first Corinthians, the third, 15th chapter, he says, I'm talking about the gospel, y'all. And he was buried. Why is this important? It proved that he dis did not just disappear. Mm -hmm. They buried Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. is it, is it, confirmed, it confirms his death. Oh. He died. Mm -hmm. And he was buried. And he rolled, on though, and he rolled again yeah. on the third day. Uh, is attested, this is attested by the, the main witnesses. And if you want to uh, see what the main witnesses say, I don't have time right now, but you came into your house. The fifth chapter, the fifth verse, the first, 15 chapter of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, the fifth verse through the ninth verse, but you can listen to the uh, witnesses. Or you know something about a witness. The witnesses will send you to jail, or they'll, they'll, they'll get you out, or they'll get you out. That's one thing about a witness. I'm not talking about somebody that heard it, no, I'm talking about a witness. There were witnesses. Uh, there is no gospel. There is no gospel apart from these three facts. The death, burial, and the resurrection. Then he says, according to the scriptures, I'm almost finished. According to the scriptures. As I said earlier, this Old Testament scripture he's talking about. Psalm 16 and 10 says, You will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your holy one see decay. In other words, I'm not going to be there all year. I'm not going to be there for 10 years. No, he, he said, Three days. Three days, three nights. He got up. Just a promise in the Old Testament. And Matthew 12 and 4 says, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. As I told you, the gospel does not tell us something that we must do. The gospel tells us that Jesus Christ has already done for us. It's already done. It's already done. We're trying to do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him help you. Yeah. Do you want to talk to that person? Let God help you to talk to that person. Because yeah. 
sometimes when we thought, well, we mess it up, huh? Yeah. Well, we really want to be saved. Well, we, you know you're going to hell. No, oh, that, that's not the way to start it off. No, 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 no. No, oh, no you don't know that's the way to start it off. <laughs> Let God help you. Yeah. You and your mama are going to hell. No, no, that's not the way to start it off. No, you don't. Yeah. 